Welcome to Season Chasers. I'm Rob Freeman. Those that love nature and outdoor sports spend a lot of quality time looking for adventure throughout the year. The more you study, the more you learn about the peak seasons in nature. It's fun to know when it's best to go fishing or hunting, when it's time to pick blueberries, wild mushrooms, or native pecans. Sometimes the peak season is close to home, right in your own backyard, or it could be miles away near the mountains and the sea. Either way, this program will chase the seasons where the action is hot. The season is spring. It's April in southeast Kansas, and it's that time that uh, we like to spread a lot of corn on the ground. And uh, part of the reason for that is just about all the wildlife is uh, really, really hungry after a big long winter and are looking for something good to eat. And uh, we've had this feeder going for several weeks now, and I've had to come out here and refill it now and then. But it's a timer type device that uh, I've got it set to set out corn early in the morning uh, to encourage day feeding. But uh, just about everything takes advantage of corn on the ground. Um, on today's hunt, we got to see a lot of songbirds uh, out here first thing. Uh, a lot of oh, cardinals and blue jays and red winged blackbirds and those sort of things. But uh, there's also turkeys that come in here and deer and uh, I imagine some raccoons during the night and uh, some different, uh, different creatures that uh, benefit from, uh, from this feeder right here. And when I go into Blue Ribbon, I always tell them, give me some of that corn that the wildlife think tastes real good off the ground. Today on Season Chasers, we're gonna be uh, celebrating a couple of uh, April items of spring. Uh, first of all, we're gonna be uh, doing a little spoonbill fishing. Uh, most of these uh, scenes we're going to have today are from uh, trips in Oklahoma, uh, what we call Oklahoma pole benders. Oh, look here. Here he is. Got him right in the nose. Look at this guy. We're also going to have our uh, second Gun of the Week feature from John Sports Center. Adam is going to show us some uh, starter shotguns for little guys and the little girls. And then we're going to top it off with a crossbow hunt right out here. It's all coming up today on Season Chasers. Thanks for coming along. All right, well, I finally got me a spoonbill bite. Dan's got the fish then. No, Dan's got me. You're under the motor. Okay, now, now you're over it. Yeah, I got a fish. I do. Okay, you're you're twisted on me. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, we're we're loose. There we go. If you want to catch a big fish, you gotta have a big rod. We got that today. And I think this is an Oklahoma pole bender. Oh, look here. Here he is. Got him right in the nose. Look at this guy. Alrighty. Now what do we do? Alright, you wanna let me give you a glove? Yeah. Just put it on your right hand. Doesn't matter which way, and then you just grab them by the tail. Just go like super good to it. Well, just it keeps it from. I mean, it doesn't slide so bad. They're slimy. I mean, all right. Here's the fun part. I'm gonna try to pull the tail around to you. He didn't he didn't help help matters any did he welcome aboard senor pull him in I am I'm trying to get it back up in the boat now that's what I'm talking about thank you he screwed 
These gloves are awesome, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a difference. Yeah. All right, let's get a look at this guy. We'll get him unhooked and tended to, and then uh, I'll run the boat and you guys catch one. Holy cheat. You want your glove back? Yeah. This is Rob's lesson at spoonbill fishing. And this is a big old fish. We're down at Grand Lake of the Cherokees. We've been trolling off this boat first week of March. And I guarantee there's no casual boaters out today. It's snaggers. And they're out here because these guys are coming up the rivers. And uh, this is a hoot. Uh, pulling a big treble hook behind. Now this one's got a tag in its jaw. And we're going to tag this ourselves and turn it into the Oklahoma officials let them uh, clean it for us and see what this can tell us. But Jason says this is kind of like shooting a banded goose and uh, this is a lot of fun. These fish don't have any teeth or anything. They sift uh, food out of the water and this mouth really opens up and prehistoric looking fish and we're glad to bring this in aboard the boat today and share it with you on season chasers. I've been studying, I've been learning, and thanks to uh, Jason and Dan for sharing this today. And uh, we're gonna try to get a couple in, their name on them next, on season chasers. Thanks a lot. Another Oklahoma pole bender. We haven't been here an hour yet. Took us longer to drive down here than to catch these fish, didn't it? Sure did. We had the radar on today. Jason, that's a good one. Really nice little male. Should be good eating. Cool. Let me get the glove and yeah. see what we can do with this guy. He's in the boat. This didn't take very doggone long today, folks. Jason helped me land mine, and then he helped land his, and my golly. Big fish. Big lake. <laughs> we haven't gotten away from the outside of the bridge, Jason. You got another one. I'm going to spend all my time reeling in. Better get that important call there. <laughs> You're gonna have to wait. I'm on the other line. <laughs> you got an important, important one on the line here, don't you? Yeah, I got it. Somebody's gonna have to hold. This one's in the head. Oh yeah. Now what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh that, that is a fat one. He's wrapped pretty good. What do you think here? Well, he hasn't made his run yet, so... You hooked Flipper.
Can you get the glove out? Yeah. Should we, should we give this fish permission to board? You want to bring him in and keep him? Well, let's take a look. He's good. I don't know if he's your 6-0, though. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's that big. All right, well, let me trade you here. Okay. We've got a big staff here in the boat, you can tell. But you're right in here with us. It's me and Jason and this big old fish just about to be in the boat. That's the plan, anyway. And I, I do believe he's a noser. Why don't you hang on to him real good there? <laughs> I got him riled up pretty good. <laughs> I, I got to take some. I got to take some lessons from the lander. <laughs> I got to get the nose over. Oh yeah, he's bigger. <laughs> I think this is bigger, Jason. Oh yeah, you betcha. <laughs> Woohoo! What do you say? Got him right there on the side. Oh goodness! Get with this other hand. Clear the gear here. Okay, it's almost clear. That's a pig, buddy. I think that's closer to your six O. Look at that deal. What? I, I think we'll get the duct tape out on this one, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Look at that pig! Oh my goodness. Yeah, I needed two landers on that one. Wow. I think that's uh, I think that's a big one so far. Wow. Yeah, be nice to my tackle there. Oh yeah. Okay, I gotta. Why don't you give me your numbers? <laughs> told you, it's, told you it's bigger. I'm gonna try to do it where I can get the whole fish in the picture. So what you get, catch a fish like that, you got to go on the publicity tour. <laughs> So have you seen any bigger ones? I mean, really big ones today, or? One other, one other about like that, probably. Well, we probably had a couple similar. But I wouldn't, nothing, I'd say it was bigger than that. Oh, cool. How much that in weight? You probably better that than us. I guess it's over 50. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's over, over 60, I'd say. Yeah. Really? All right. Yeah. That's what he was after. <laughs> I had a guy bring in one while ago, he said he weighed it, weighed 54, and it wasn't that big. Oh, wow. Jason's paddlefish held the number two spot on the daily board at the research center at 68 and a half pounds and that's only one pound behind the day's leader. My buddy Ned got to catch his first spoonbill last spring. Spoonbill fishing at Grand Lake is usually really hot right up through the end of April. Oklahoma has changed the limits on spoonbill this year so check the regs carefully. It's way different than years past. I'm told that the limits are intended to conserve the paddlefish population in the state of Oklahoma. There's no bigger freshwater action around here than spoonbill in the spring. Don't worry about them biting. It could be a real snag fest all the way through April at Oklahoma's Grand Lake. It's just about my favorite time to go so I'll see you soon down at Grand Lake. Coming up next, Adam has some starter shotguns and a selection of colors on John Sports Center's Gun of the Week. It's a new special feature on Season Chasers. Then it's opening day on the prairie for spring turkey season in the state of Kansas. It's the archery, youth, and disability preseason, and my guest Steve Shepard is in the blind looking for his first wild turkey. We hadn't been out there very long when these guys decided to join the party. Details coming up next 
on Season Chasers. It's Chick Days at Blue Ribbon Farm and Home in Pittsburgh. All the chicken supplies you need to get started. Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has what you need to feed the wild birds. Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has what you need to plant a beautiful garden. Seeds, plants, fertilizer, and weed control for your lawn. Don't forget Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has a huge selection of food for dogs. Whether you have a lap dog, a sport dog, chickens, or a goofy goat, Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has all the feeds you'll ever need. You talk about a goofy goat, and this is the goofy goat right here. Extreme environments can cause a spontaneous change in DNA, resulting in unexpected power and agility, introducing the all-new, all-powerful Gator RSX 850i. 62 horsepower, a fully independent multi-link suspension, and a top speed of 53 miles per hour. It's a whole new species of Gator. Don't forget, the uh, Kickstarter campaign is open right now for our hunt for the Lake Clark Monster this summer in Alaska. Go to the address on your screen here and get all the details about how you can help on this year's Lake Clark Monster Hunt from Alaska. Here at the gun counter at John Sports Center in Pittsburgh, Kansas, and we're talking with Adam about uh, some of the new guns that uh, these weren't around when I was uh, first starting to get into shotgunning, and you've got some youth guns here that are pretty remarkable. Pretty awesome changes. They finally figured out that a youth shooter is a youth shooter. We figured out how to make the length of pull much shorter, so it fits them out of the box. It also gives them room to grow. With each gun comes a spacer or a shim to increase it by a quarter or a half inch as they grow and get older. They figured out also how to make the forearm shorter so that our length of pull is at a shorter length. So now they can actually get the correct sight picture, they can learn the firearm, they can control it better, and of course be more effective with it as far as a youth hunter goes. So as far as first guns go, uh, we've got a lot of different uh, selections now. This one's in a 20 gauge and it's a Remington. Correct. And then this one's even a little bit smaller in a, in a smaller bore. Everybody can't wait and a lot of times I, I love it when they come in and they're, they're eight years old on the other side of the counter and can't hardly see over. So they made something called a 510 Mini and it's actually a 11 inch length of pole. So it's small enough that the little guys that haven't broke the 65 pound mark can get inside the blind with dad, get on top of the gun, encompass it correctly, keep their hand off the safety, finger off the trigger, all that kind of stuff, and actually shoot and pattern a gun correctly. And this has all of the features of an adult size gun uh, for the little guys. It does, it does. I really like the thumb safety on the top also. So it's apparent, it's visible to them as far as that goes. They've left the slide release in the same spot as an adult weapon, but the biggest feature is that they made it overall a much tinier weapon to where, like I say, they can encompass it, shoulder it, and actually point it correctly rather than shooting grandpa's gun that their head's back here and they get scared the first time it goes off. Well, and it's first uh, time I held up my dad's gun, it was hard for me to hold it up with my left hand. <laughs> so uh, these are more size for the kids, and then uh, this one be for boys or girls, but uh, you're getting a lot more uh, uh, younger girls taking part in the shooting sports these days. Definitely. Lots of women, so lots of pink firearms. It seems to be kind of the rage here lately, but of course Old Faithful would be the camo. Um, one thing they did increase greatly on these two, they went to a supercell recoil pad. So if they are shooting a magnum load for turkey hunting, it's going to reduce the recoil dramatically. We've got to accessorize it, of course, and we got to practice. We want to practice in a safe manner. On a youth shotgun especially, I'd recommend buying the lightest load that we have, usually like a 20 gauge, 7 8 ounce load. Take them out, set them down, get in a comfortable position. Of course, we'll have some good hearing protection of some kind to wear along with them. Get them to understand the function of the weapon, how to control it, how to shoot it without scaring them. But as we progress and get more comfortable with patterning it, we have different targets that change colors, different options there different loads catered also because obviously if you're buying a 510 mini bantam we want to buy a reduced recoil load from like federal it's effective out to 40 yards no problem at all but it doesn't have near the felt recoil as a magnum heavy shot 20 gauge 3 inch load so we'll have a different load for each situation whether it's male female or just an older person that has limp ability as far as not wanting to be able to shoulder the weapon 
All right, so if you're looking for a first gun, we've got uh, three shotguns here, uh, two Remingtons and a Mossberg. They're the gun of the week and good starter shotguns here from John Sports Center. Thanks a lot, Adam. All right, appreciate it. Thank you, Rob. If you'd like more information on the gun of the week or any of the other guns in stock or for special orders, stop by John Sports Center at 18th and Broadway in Pittsburgh for more information. And tune in to Season Chasers next week for next week's Gun of the Week from John Sports Center. The opening day of turkey season is one of my favorite mornings of the year. Steve and I got an early start, and we're getting situated in the box blind, not too far from an established turkey roosting area. We're hunting near a corn feeder, which is legal in Kansas, and we're hoping to selectively harvest a full-grown tom turkey. Now on a setup like this, we found that decoys and calls really don't help so much. If you get a feed spot established, the turkeys will stay around and there's nothing that works better than live birds in attracting those toms. We didn't have to wait too long for the first hen to arrive and as we focus on the first bird we see I hear some other birds and Steve turns around and sees them. After the hens crossed in front of us, these two males showed up right about the door of the blind. Unlike a shotgun blast, the crossbow shot scattered the group, but actually not too fast. We reload the crossbow, and Steve heads out to see for sure if he really got him. Now this is the hardest part of a hunt. You think you made a good shot, but now Steve's got to wonder, was it really good enough? Kansas gobbler. Wow. And what's really, really unique about this, Steve got him with this crossbow. Now, is this the first big tom like this you've gotten before? Or? This is my very first turkey. First turkey, and you got him with a crossbow. First time I ever used a crossbow. Now, he took off a little bit. We, we did have a little bit of chase here, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> I sent my bird dog after him. He came back and found this. And this thing went straight through him and did an excellent job on slowing him down. I think I moved a little out of anxious. I was a little bit anxious and I moved a little bit just as I pulled the trigger. But I got him solid enough, it broke one leg, went through and clipped the wing on the other side. 
but it went completely through him. And there's feathers and all sorts of stuff on here. And here's what you got to show for it too. Right there. You have this big fella right here. So what were you thinking about when all this is going on? Well, we were kind of, it's kind of nerve wracking at first. We had some birds come in, it, hens, and then we were watching the hens and I happened to look over to my left and I said, there are two toms over there. And I was thinking about taking a shot out another window and I thought, no, nah, I'll wait until they come around. I didn't feel comfortable because they were closer than what we'd been practicing. And when they got out a little farther, this one, I kept waiting for it to turn sideways and the other one kept turning sideways, but for some reason I wanted this one. And he finally turned sideways just a little bit, and when he did, I pulled the trigger. I was sitting there, and I was, I don't know if it was cold or nerves, but I was shaking a little bit. And I thought, don't miss it. <laughs> what kind of distance uh, do you think think you got him from? At probably 35 yards, I'm going to say. I had, him, uh, had it on the, uh, just about the 30-yard dot on the scope and uh, I felt comfortable on that and evidently I was right on the distance because it hit just about where that 30 yard dot was. Sometimes a hunt has a deeper meaning that might meet the eye. This is for you, Tom. The reason I said what I said was Brother Tom said we never got a hunt together, turkey hunt. Yeah. And uh, so this is for him has uh, remembered for my brother. So, thank you. And this is for you, Tommy. You got a big old Tom for Tom. <laughs> I did. That's a good deal. Uh, Way to be, Steve. Walker, walker. Tune in each week for some of the stuff you just won't see on other shows. Outdoors, wildlife, and a life of adventure. Being on the lookout for natural foods and making the most of what the wildlife provides. Study, learn, and share the great outdoors with someone who's important to you.